Yeah, thanks, Andrew. CJ and the receivers definitely had a dominant game. Yeah, stellar performance really led to an offensive explosion for the Hawks. Well, as we already know, the Cyhawk series has come to an end, and it was a very successful weekend for Hawkeye sports. So let's start with football. There are many key players that made a 42-3 victory a reality on Saturday, and one of the most important ones was Matt Vandenberg. I tell you more about his performance against the Cyclones. Well, the Hawkeyes came out with a victory on Saturday night against their in-state rivals, Iowa State, and one of the receivers came through with a big game. Matt Vandenberg had seven catches for 129 yards with one touchdown, and yet he was still concerned about a couple catches he thinks he should have had. I left a few of them out there, you know, uh, and now I need to work on making sure that I don't leave those kind of plays out there because it stalled the drive and we weren't able to move the ball on that particular drive, so we need to fix those and then come back next week. He apologized for that. He beats himself up over drops like that, uh, but you know he made he made enough plays in the game to for that to be okay there. Although Vandenberg was mostly focused on his drop catches, he still came out of the game with a touchdown and also was named Player of the Game. Matt's a tremendous football player. Works hard. Same same guy you see is what he is in practice as well. So he missed a little time there at the end of camp and was a little bit off I think last week, but uh, certainly he's back in the rhythm and now and. Uh, you know, CJ's an outstanding player too, so it was just good to see those two guys execute some really tough plays. He was you know, making plays, and you know, the, the way they were having coverage, it, it just felt like you know he was the best matchup in some of those situations, and um, gave him some shots, and he, and he made good plays in those situations. Now that Vandenberg has had a full year starting under his belt, it has only made him stronger and smarter for his senior season. Just kind of knowing defense is a lot easier. Uh, you know, now that I've seen looks and been in there for a year, it's a lot easier to tell, uh, you know, what they're rotating to and things like that, what kind of coverage I'm seeing, and then be able to use that to my advantage. You know, just having that experience, again, uh, having a full year under my belt, being able to recognize different things so I know if I need to, you know, block the safety or block the linebacker, things like that help as well. From Connect Stadium, this has been Mary-Kate Herrian, Daily Iowan TV Sports. Vandenberg and the rest of the football team will be back in Knick Stadium this Saturday when they take on North Dakota State. And as always, Kirk Ferentz will meet with the media today at 1.15. If you'd like to watch, it will be streaming live on HawkeyeSports.com. Our football reporters will also have updates from the press conference later this week. Moving on to another sport that dominated this past weekend, the women's field hockey team has won five of their last six games, and freshman Katie Birch and Sophie Sutherland have traveled the distance to become a part of this winning recipe. Olivia Corbett has more on the story. Sunderland have traveled over 4,000 miles away to play field hockey here at the University of Iowa. Not only have they made major impacts on the field so far, but Birch has already been named Big Ten Freshman of the Week not once, but twice. With five games under their belt, I think it's safe to say that these two freshmen have an incredible season ahead of them. I looked at a variety of different universities, but when I stepped on campus at the University of Iowa, I knew it was the right university for me. The support given to a student athlete is amazing and the facilities here are incredible and it feels like one big family. They've been so friendly, so kind, and like I just haven't felt like I've been out of it at all. It's been great to be here. With a strong start to the season, it's easy for coaches and players to recognize the positive aspects these girls bring to the team. They've been doing great. I mean, they've really adjusted very quickly to just the American culture, to the climate, because it's much warmer here, which we knew that was going to probably be one of the biggest issues. Um, but they stepped in to practice right away in preseason, did great, and this past weekend they performed exceptionally. They're really impacting the team, um, both making a huge difference. Out, out on the field, um, Katie back there is like a wall. Not many people can get through her, and Sophie in the midfield, um, setting a lot of people up for success, um, has really good skills. They're just a really good asset to our team, and we're really, really lucky that they're here. As the season continues, the relationship only gets stronger. Really good friends, and we keep each other positive. We kind of knew each other back in England, but now we're here. Like It feels like we're really good friends, and I think it'll stay like that. If these two freshmen can keep playing like they have so far, I don't see this win streak ending anytime soon. Reporting at Grant Field, this has been Olivia Corbett, Daily Iowan TV Sports. The field hockey team is hoping to continue their streak this weekend as they take on Penn State this Friday at 3 and Ball State on Sunday at 1 at Grant Field. It was announced on Monday that senior swimmer Emma Sogstad is a collegeswimming.com preseason All-American in the 100-yard breaststroke. This is not the only time Sogstad has been recognized. Last season, she received honorable mention All-American honors. The swimming and diving team starts their season September 29th at a Big Ten Conference duel at Michigan State. 
It was also announced Monday that the Iowa cross country teams entered regional rankings. The women's team is ranked number 12 and the men are 13th. The next meet for the Hawkeye cross country will be September 24th in Minneapolis for the Roy Gryak Invitational. That's all we have time for here in the sports studio. Tune in tomorrow again at 8.30. We'll have football, volleyball, and something a little different. Andrew, back to you.